Greetings and a very warm welcome to a little village called Little Bytham and this is just north of Stamford on a lovely straight stretch of track, railway track between Stamford and Grantham and it was here in 1938 that the locomotive on the East Coast Main Line called Mallard broke the land speed record and a friend of mine Jed sent me this um, centre page news cutting highlighting this village uh, and one of the most interesting things is a viaduct which runs straight through the middle of the village so I thought we'd just come and have a little look well, I think you can tell that this is a brick-built viaduct with quite a large centre span for its time of day. So there's ample room for two cars to pass as it goes under the central arch. And it is very wide here. As the tracks approach this viaduct, from what I've seen as I drove here, there's only two tracks. But it seems to me that up on the viaduct originally there was four tracks. I've got an idea there used to be a junction here but I'm not quite sure about that. Must be very noisy for the residents who live here. That house in particular but then again, from the westerly winds, it's very well sheltered, isn't it? So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little walk round the village. Must be a farm the other side of the viaduct because I can hear cattle noises. Why, I wonder, is there such a small arch there? Was that an actual walkway originally? I find this most odd because we've got a viaduct pillar there and then we've got another much wider viaduct pillar there. So which was built first? The small one or the wider one? Or is this where another line converged from the east. This is the footpath that can be used by rail track to get up onto the viaduct. And everywhere you go, you get a notice like that. Sorry for the noise, nothing I can do about that. But um, we get these notices, a thousand pound if you trespass, and yet time and time again we see um, paintings and um, artistic drawings on the side of bridges and viaducts and even on wagons that have been standing in sidings but you never hear of anyone being fined a thousand pounds this is looking west along the village street Go up there and turn left and you go back to Stamford. 
And we were talking about Mallard, weren't we? And there you have, right near the viaduct, Mallard House. At a guess, I would say that there was another building adjoining Mallard House. And just across this side of the road, there's a little shop and a very old petrol pump. That is definitely an antique. Oh, there you are, at least you've got one train going over. <laughs> We're now at the T-junction and this is the road to Castle Bython. Whether there's a castle there or not I don't know. And looking down there that is the road to Stamford. And just to recap, looking back at the uh, Mallard house there, that used to be a pub called the Green Man. I just got that information from the lady standing there who's sweeping a little shop front. There also used to be a station here. I'll tell you what, it's amazing. Oh, look at the post box there set in the wall of a cottage. It's amazing how noisy this little village is. There's a freight train just going over the viaduct through the trees there. It's always my luck to miss all the freight trains. But anyway, this brings us up through the village, not a very big village at all, brings us up to the church and it's about 20 to 12. So there you go, Church Lane. Never been to this village before, don't know where this is going to lead us. Very narrow road, but it does say that there's a ford down here. So will I have to paddle or will there be a little bridge? Well, it's certainly a very windy road. And the windy road winds again through the ford. Luckily I don't have to paddle because here is a little bridge. I can hear the trains. And the road continues round there, I should think back out to the road that leads back to Stamford and the railway is on an embankment way in the background there.
And this is a view looking in the opposite direction, down the little narrow road that I've just come down from the church. I think a few snowdrops is just about the only thing we're going to see today. It's a bit too early for the daffodils and the crocus. Nice and peaceful here, except for the droning of an aircraft. By a babbling brook, in a shady nook, I stood by this brook hoping to see a train go by. Anyway, <laughs> never mind the singing, this is where this little brook travels under the Stamford Road and under the railway which is up on that embankment Down there, you've got another, well, you probably call that a bridge. I don't know, it's two or three arches. Certainly a three-arched bridge or viaduct, call it a mini viaduct, shall we? And you can still see that once there was one bit viaduct was built after another quite strange that it's got the we've got the narrow portion on the opposite side to what we had before and look at all the traffic coming now I'm filming it was lovely and quiet as I walked up that street I start filming and all you get is a load of traffic disgusting something you have to put up with modern day life yeah this bridge you see now down where I first started filming the narrow viaduct is the opposite way round here it's on the west side up the other end it's on the east side so I don't know don't know and I certainly haven't got a clue where the station was So here we're looking at the bridge from the east side. As you can see, the road winds under the bridge. Goes down towards Stamford, where you have another railway embankment and a bridge. But it looks as if there's no way could it turn sharply to the right and, and join onto this set of railway tracks. So uh, it's got me a little bit beat, uh, but I shall probably look it up when I get home, I should think, and uh, try and work out what was here in the 1930s and 40s. Looking between the buildings, I would say and guess that the other railway went over the top of this one. The, west, the East Coast Main Line, north to south, and there you've got brickwork there, which I think is the remains of an old bridge of this railway here, going east to west, crossed over the north to south. So once again, a look at the old railway bridge and uh, that's about uh, all we can find out about this 
what I thought was a junction, but obviously was not. Okay, bit out of puff, but <laughs> I decided to venture alongside of the building that stands at the side of the embankment, and this has brought me up a rough sort of track uh, onto the side of the East Coast Main Line, and uh, my assumption is correct. There you can see where the East West Railway went over the top of the North South. Whether I can get up there or not, I don't know. What a lovely view from up here. <laughs> I did manage to get up and that is looking north towards Newark and somewhere along this stretch of track is where Mallard did its speed record in 1938 I think we said and looking across there is the parapet for an overbridge over here we've got four tracks here now so I don't understand the building of the viaduct, why there's two separate parts. I would imagine they built two tracks first and then added two tracks later on. I am standing on the opposite parapet. And there you can see the view looking south towards Peterborough. And And behind me is a totally overgrown railway track bed. So we'll just hang on and give you the thrill of a train passing. And uh, then we'll head off. And that wasn't all, because I'm now on the road back to Stamford and I came across the Willoughby Arms right on the outskirts of the village and lo and behold You're right, that is the old station building So at some time in the past there would have been station platforms here and probably an overbridge and you would have come out of the station there having bought your ticket for a journey maybe to Peterborough or to London or Newark or even Edinburgh. <laughs> 